Hello, and welcome to the University of Colorado. My name is Tyler Anstead. I'm a hospitalist who practices at the University of Colorado Hospital. I also serve as the director of GME Quality and Safety Programs, and I'm faculty in the Institute for Healthcare Quality, Safety, and Efficiency here on campus. In this short video, we will be discussing patient safety and how you might experience and contribute to our culture here at CU. Over the course of this short presentation, we will cover the following learning objectives. In summary, we will cover the basics of patient safety as it pertains to your joining us as a provider, seeing patients in our hospitals and clinics. I have no relevant financial disclosures, but have adapted this work with permission from others. Here are the key takeaways from this presentation. First, we'll explore the impact of patient harm. Second, we'll define a safety culture. And finally, we will demonstrate how to address and prevent patient harm. As many of you likely know, in 1999, the Institute of Medicine released its seminal report on patient safety. In this report, the IOM produced staggering statistics, including this one, that between 44,000 and almost 100,000 patient deaths occur every year due to medical error. To put this into context, the capacity of our local Coors field is 50,000 people. So that means that every year in the United States, one or two baseball stadiums of patients die due, due to preventable causes. I think we can all agree that with this quote from the report, that the status quo at that time in 1999 was not acceptable and shouldn't be tolerated any longer. 15 years after that groundbreaking report, a follow-up from the National Patient Safety Foundation found these sobering results, that despite progress, preventable harm remained unacceptably frequent in all settings. So now we're in 2022 and we're making progress, but we still have work to do. As evidenced by this follow-up publication a year later in the British Medical Journal, medical error is attributed to the third leading cause of death in the United States. Unfortunately, not only do patients die at the hands of medical error, but even more are harmed. One in 10 patients that are hospitalized develops an adverse event during their hospitalization. These are also known as hospital-acquired conditions. And one in two, 50% of surgeries have a medication error or an adverse drug event. In addition to providing updated statistics from the 1999 to Errors Human Report, the report from the National Patient Safety Foundation also provided practical recommendations for how to improve. Many of these you will see here in our hospitals at the University of Colorado, though this is an ongoing work in progress. You will notice that many of these fall onto the leadership of health systems. However, we as providers still have a role to play. One critical recommendation was to develop a culture of safety. So let's talk about what that actually means and how you can help. You can see that a culture of safety is comprised of five other subcultures. It is interesting to note that this original work was not developed in healthcare. Rather, this was postulated and developed by Dr. James Reason, a British psychologist who worked in airline safety nearly 25 years before the Institute of Medicines to Air as Human was published. The five components of a safety culture are listed. They are an informed culture, or one that is aware of its strengths and weaknesses, a reporting culture, one where everyone in the institution reports on opportunities and deficiencies, a learning culture is one that strives to learn from its successes and missteps, a just culture ensures that the principle of justice is applied throughout the institution to improve the safety culture, and finally, a flexible culture is one that responds to internal and external threats, such as a global pandemic, to modify processes and procedures as needed to continue to provide safe and effective care. Now let's take a deeper dive into a reporting culture and a just culture. There is a standardized way to submit patient safety reports at every one of our hospitals and clinics, though they may be called something different depending on the institution. In your orientation packet, there are resources, but these may change over time. We encourage you to seek out how to submit reports at every place you will be providing care. After all, if the institution doesn't know about its problems, it can't fix them. Again, if you see something, say something. 
And the best way to say something so it can be tracked and acted upon is through a patient safety report. In your materials, there is a document that covers these key questions about patient safety reporting. Why? What should you report? What happens when you, when you report? And will you get into trouble if you submit a patient safety report? We've already covered the why, to provide an informed culture. But the what is simply anything that does, or has the potential to, cause harm or distress. Your reports are reviewed systematically by the institutions. And will you get into trouble? No. There are federal protections in place for voluntary patient safety reporting. So you should feel absolutely comfortable that you are protected if you say something. All that said, just like the rest of your training, learning what and how to report is a learning process. We encourage you to work with your teams, and if needed, risk management, to identify what and how you should report. Moving on from a reporting culture, let's discuss a just culture. A just culture is one where we take a larger view of problems that arise in providing medical care with a focus on systems thinking. A just culture is one where individuals are not held accountable for system failings over which they have no control. In fact, many errors and patient harms arise from predictable and repeatable interactions in our complex systems. These are the issues that the institutions work on every day to change. However, it is important to note that this, this does not mean that individuals are not held accountable for their actions. If a provider makes a willful error or needs more training, these individual issues are addressed. A just culture provides a safe space to discuss and analyze what contributed to error and harm. Next, we will review how to investigate patient safety events using a just culture framework. To start, let's discuss adverse events and medical errors. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement defines an adverse event as an unintended outcome or harm to a patient resulting from or contributed to uh, by medical care that requires additional monitoring, treatment, or hospitalization, or that results in death. For example, if a patient has an allergic reaction to penicillin, this is an adverse event. A medical error is an incorrect action leading to that undesirable harm or outcome, or one with significant potential for such an outcome. Using the penicillin example, if a patient is given a dose of penicillin despite having a documented allergy, this is a medical error. Sometimes these occur in isolation. If this was the first time a patient had an allergic reaction to penicillin, this could not have been known to the providers and was therefore not preventable, but still an adverse event. Similarly, a medication listed on the allergy list may not always result in, an, in an, a reaction. When this occurs, it is called a near miss. It has the potential to cause harm. When an adverse event and medical error overlap, that is an error occurs, example, known allergy is listed, but the medication is given anyway, and the patient has an allergic reaction, this is what we call preventable medical harm. Medical errors come in two flavors. The first is an error of planning. In other words, the wrong thing was done. Conversely, there may be an error of execution where the right thing was done, but executed poorly. For example, a peripherally inserted central line or a pick may have been indicated for vascular access, but someone chose to insert a triple lumen catheter instead of a single lumen catheter, leading to a line associated thrombosis. Again, this was the right thing that was done, but done in the wrong way. Critically, the just culture framework moves us away from asking who messed up to what can we do to prevent the next patient from being harmed. Once an adverse event is identified, the process for reviewing the issues is known as a root cause analysis. The steps are listed here. Critically, this is not just about listing problems, but identifying the underlying why something happened and then closing with proposing and hopefully implementing solutions to prevent the next patient from being harmed. One thing to note is that not all adverse events are due to a medical error. That does not mean, however, that an event should not be evaluated. As we mentioned before, systems experts tell us that many adverse events are a result of predictable outcomes because of the way a system functions or was designed. 
During your time here, you will all have the opportunity to participate in a case review. Depending on your program and the hospital or clinic where this is happening, it may be called something else, like an M&M, a closed-the-loop event, or a collaborative case review. Regardless of what it's called, you will recognize the structure and we encourage you to actively participate because as frontline providers, you will have important insights into both problems and solutions. Beyond your individual programs, we have many opportunities for you to receive more training or get exposed to patient safety and improving the care we provide. For training, we have a Quality and Safety Academy. On Orientation Day, you will hear more about the GME Quality and Safety Incentive Program, through which you will be eligible to receive an extra $1,000 for engaging in quality and safety activities at each of the hospitals. We also have a small, small grants program run through the Institute for Healthcare Quality, Safety, and Efficiency, targeted at funding improvement work at university and children's hospitals. Finally, we have a monthly structured meetings with the leadership of University of Colorado Hospital for you to celebrate good culture and discuss opportunities for improvement. But that's not all. Every one of the hospitals and clinics where you may work is focused on avoiding harm and improving care every day. We encourage you to seek out opportunities to participate. So let's review what we've discussed. You recognize the extent and impact of patient harm, and despite us being two decades out from two errors human, we still have work to do. You can now define a safety culture and understand that it is actually comprised of five separate subcultures. And finally, you now have a broad understanding of how our hospitals and clinics work to address and prevent patient harm through, through reporting and event review. Now, I would like you to make a commitment. On your first day of service at a new hospital or clinic, ask, how do I submit a patient safety report here? What is it called? Remember, if you see something, say something, so the institution can make improvements to prevent the next patient from being harmed. Are you with me? I don't have to tell you, but you are entering into a noble profession that is tremendously rewarding. But that reward is not without risk. There's a lot at stake for our patients, for you as providers, and more broadly, the communities that we serve. You are now a part of our team and will contribute to our culture of safety. Again, welcome to the University of Colorado, and thank you for listening.